Thank you for auditing the always positive new music review show hosted by a French professor who's going to be reviewing the album, honestly, never mind, by Drake. Now, I am making this review within 24 hours of the album's release, and you may be thinking, oh no, Sky has finally given up and he's going to do a reaction video. Well, I gotta tell you, I don't do reaction videos. I don't hate people who make them, I don't hate people who watch them, but that's not my thing. I want to provide analysis at the deepest level. And what I'm going to try to do now is provide that analysis for this album by Drake. I believe the analysis I'm going to provide is going to be as deep as necessary and as deep as you can go with this album, which is sort of simultaneously very deep and very superficial. The sort of larger question that I think we always have to ask with any successful artist, whenever they make anything, and I mean any successful artist, I don't care if we're talking about Drake or Picasso or, or the Beatles, any successful artist or Steven Spielberg, any successful artist, it really is a question of the relationship between commerce and art. How much of what they make is just a tool to make money, to make the money machine work, and how much of what they make is the result of a personal vision. Always, always, any artistic product is some combination of those two things. Sometimes it's more weighted towards an artistic personal vision that is not concerned with monetary uh, remuneration. Fancy word. I just want it Scrabble. Uh, and sometimes it's sort of more clear that it's not necessarily a cash grab, but has the bottom line in mind. So we go back to last year in the album Certified Lover Boy, which I liked for the most part. When we think about the rollout, the huge rollout and the shaving his name into his head and having billboards all across the world and getting the great artist Damien Hirst to do the cover, to have the whole thing with so many features and the whole, it's just like an like overstuffed, oh, you know, stuffed crust pizza, you know? A meat lover's pizza. Uh, it's just too much meat. Just, just put some of it away. And, and the thing with Drake is he's got so many flavors, you know? He's got his rap flavor and he's got his singer flavor and he's got his slight West Indian flavor. He's got all these flavors, his R&B flavor. He kind of throws them all at you. And this has been a problem that I've had with Drake. I think everyone has it is he, he tries to be all things to all people because he is very successful at being many things to many people. Rapper, singer, lover boy, both the biggest hater in rap and the most hated. And I think, even though I do think you could qualify Certified Lover Boy as a quality piece of art, you could also qualify it as a vulgar piece of marketing because it is constantly trying to give everybody what everybody wants. Which brings us to Honestly Nevermind, which gives us what nobody was asking for. Nobody said, hey, Drake, when are you going to release a house album? When are you going to have only one feature on your next album? When are you going to basically only sing? When are you going to do this thing that isn't being done right now? Drake, oops, made an impressive piece of art. I don't know. Maybe it's because he's hanging around with Kanye, you know? Maybe because they're together again, he can compete with Kanye on that level. Because you could compete with Kanye on the level of music, but to compete with him on the level of being able to change the zeitgeist, to be able to change the culture, that's a whole nother question. And that's part of what makes this album so interesting, and I've seen a lot of comments and people not liking it, people being upset at it, which I say is great. That's Drake making what he wants to make. But let's take it one step further. Now, in the 10 hours I've been able to think about this album before making this video, I saw the whole thing is dedicated to Virgil Abloh. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know I love Virgil Abloh. I saw his show at the... Uh, Institute of Contemporary Art in Boston, and it is one of the best museum shows I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot. Former art history major, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm a guy who's seen a lot of shows, okay? And I can tell you that Virgil Abloh's show was as good as most of them, better than most of them, and as good as any show I've seen. Absolutely fascinating getting an insight into a true genius of 21st century art in many different media. So, when Drake talks about making an album in honor to Virgil, I mean, we've heard people honoring Virgil all over the place. 
you know? But it's usually like, shout out to Virgil. But what Drake says he's doing is he's basing this album off of Virgil Abloh's DJ sets. Did you know Virgil Abloh was a DJ? He was. Have you ever listened to his music? Maybe. I mean, not his music, but the, 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 the music that he curated. I remember after going to that show in Boston and finding some of his music and being like, huh, I kind of wish this were more hip hop. I mean, there's like some hip hop and some R&B, but it's mostly just like, like house music. It, how, how did you feel listening to Honestly Nevermind? Did you feel this is good? I'd like a little bit more hip hop. Did you feel this is mostly just house music? He did it. Drake lost a person who he considered a friend and I suppose a mentor or colleague, that of Virgil Abloh, and he managed to successfully make an album which imitates his DJ set. You don't believe me? Check it out. I'll include a link to it up there. Just click on the fuzzy banana and you will see uh, Virgil Abloh's show, 2020, uh, it's an after show at a Louis Vuitton thing. Watch it. Watch the headspace that Louis, that, that Louis, Louis Abloh, that Vuitton, Jesus, that Virgil Abloh, I don't edit, so that's just going to stay in there, that Virgil Abloh is able to set at the Louis Vuitton show. It's exactly the same space, the same feel, the same V word coming vibe that Drake is able to achieve with this album, which makes it a concept album. And more than that, it makes it a successful concept album. No more are we just jamming together styles and different efforts and different ways of whatever's hot now and a reggaeton rhythm and a dance hall rhythm and a trap beat and a this and that and who's hot and get them all in there and just wrap it all up and make sure it's got 77 tracks so you get streaming for each of them and then just blah, onto the world and then we all have to deal with whatever the hell Drake is doing now for the next year. He made a concept album, and it works. And it's the best homage to Virgil Abloh that I've heard. And I'm including you, Kanye. What, that I don't buy Louis after Virgil passed? That's garbage compared to this album. Jeez, I just made some of, I made some of you mad. I made some of you mad, but it's true. For an homage, it's not very good. Given how important they were to each other, Virgil and Kanye, Kanye needs to do more. But amazingly, Kanye's new best friend, Drizzy Drake, has picked up where, where Kanye failed and made this concept album. He made art. And it's unexpected. I, I don't blame you. I, I'm unexpected. If you watch my videos, I throw so much shade at Drake whenever I talk about him because he's so easy to throw shade at and because he deserves a lot of shade. He's in the sun. You know what I'm saying? I think at one point I said that Drake makes music for groups of friends who are, who are not talking to each other and scrolling on their cell phones. You know, like that's the kind of like barbs that I've thrown at Drake over the years, but not this album. This is a completely successful album from start to finish with an artistic vision that is achieved. In that way, it doesn't remind me much of Certified Lover Boy. It reminds me of a different Canadian album, which I love and a lot of people don't because they're wrong, but Don FM, the weekend's most recent album. Another concept album with a very specific soundscape, a very specific goal in mind that's doing something that The Weeknd discovered people didn't want. People didn't want Don FM. I wanted Don FM because it's one of the best albums of the year, but the people didn't want it. And maybe people won't want this album by Drake, but he's doing it. He's doing what a real artist does, at least what my favorite artists do. My favorite artists don't chase, they lead. My favorite artists don't follow, they create. <laughs> that's, that's what Virgil was able to do. That's what Kanye is able to do. That's what great artists do. They do something different and their fans go, this isn't what I wanted. This isn't what I wanted. This might be what I wanted. Actually, this is what I wanted. This is the greatest thing ever. I can't believe I like this so much. If the next album doesn't sound like this, I'm going to die. And then what does the artist do? The next album sounds nothing like that. That's why Whole Lot of Red is good and why people hated Whole Lot of Red in the beginning. Because Playboy Cardi is a real artist. Just like Drake. Now, lyrically, 
So I listened to this album the first time, and lyrically I thought that the lyrics are just inconsequential. It's like every song is like, girl you left me, or girl I left you, or girl don't leave me. Upon further reflection, or upon further research, according to Lyric Genius, which is 70% yeah, correct, the 30% is usually spectacular, but 70% correct at least, it's mostly about one specific relationship, and that does kind of make sense. It does feel kind of like a breakup album, but do you know what this album is lacking in? Do you know what this album has zero of? Girl, you're a lesbian, me too. It does not have put you back in metro housing. A line which I, do, I think Drake should be canceled for. I think he should be canceled for both of those lines. <sighs> you know, that, like, that weird, creepy song? That weird, creepy, like, groomy song he has? Nope, none of that. No drugs. No out like a light. No naps. He doesn't talk about how much he loves sleeping. He doesn't talk about how disinterested he is. It's an album where all the lyrics are about love and love lost. He's not talking about being hated. He's not talking about hating. He's not spinning, spinning his wheels talking about Kanye or making allusions to Kanye or anything else. It's just this beautiful album with this soundscape that is totally dedicated to the feel of like British house music, British R&B. And it manages to be, the V word is coming back, a vibe album. But it's not the vibe that everybody is making. It's not the vibe that people want. There's a chance. There's a chance that this time next year, there'll be three, four, five more albums that sound just like this. Because Drake is doing something new. And what's funny is, I don't even like this kind of Drake. <laughs> like, before this, my favorite album was, if you're reading this, it's too late. Just because it's got the song Zero to Sixty, which is like my favorite thing that Drake's ever done. But... I think this is my new favorite Drake project because he's trying. His whole thing is not like, I'm not, you know, often his thing is like, I'm not trying. And with a title like, Honestly Never Mind, which I goofed on my YouTube channel, I said, uh, I called it a, an acoustic Nirvana cover album, which Honestly Never Mind would be a good title for that. But you know, with a title like, Honestly Never Mind, he's telegraphing the traditional Drake, I don't care, I don't care. But the good news is, there's a new king of I don't care, and his name is Jack Harlow, and he can take the crown of I don't care what I'm doing, I can't be bothered to wake up and do stuff, I'm just gonna be sleepy, and now we can just let Drake every once in a while rhyme, but just go into this, whatever this is. He, like, he's free, I don't know. He's just, it's great. I'm so glad I never fully gave up on Drake. Now let me give you an example of what he's doing right here with the song, which is my favorite song on the album, Massive. Again, you can click on the fuzzy banana to listen to the song. Starts off with beeps, like an EKG. EKG. Beep, beep. And then it develops into like a satire of a house beat. Like, it's so housey, it's ridiculous. The drums could be taken right out of England in 1997, right? The piano. <laughs> But the thing is, they never, they never, they never get rid of those beeps. So the beeps kind of go in and out of rhythm with a dun 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 dun. And then these words, which barely matter, but they're sung so well. And I know he uses autotune. I know. I understand that Drake probably can't sing that well. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. His voice sounds great. The melodies are great. The void between us and I can't let go. It doesn't really matter, all these kind of heartbreak lyrics, but just the, like, the chorus starts and like these drums go out and then come back in, and, dun, 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 and it's just emphatic and syncopated and, and the beeps catch up and they go out. And just listen to the song and do your best. S forget how much you hate Drake, okay? Just forget it. Just, I know you hate Drake. I don't, I don't blame you for hating Drake. I don't blame you, but just forget for a second. <laughs> And then listen to this song and realize all the things that are being put together here and how it doesn't sound like anything that's come out in the last couple of years. And then as you go to listen to the rest of the album, it all sounds like this. So I'm going to go through the rest of the album a little bit quicker. Have a sip of water from my official Professor Sky mug. Go to my spring store. I haven't sold a piece of merch in two months. Let's see if you can be the one to, to break my streak. Oh, smash the like bucket if you like or hate Drake. Uh, subscribe trying to get to 50k. When I get to 50k, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rank the Kanye albums. That could be fun. Uh, go to my subreddit. A lot of fun happening over there. And we'll talk about Patreon later. I'm becoming a real YouTuber.
So the intro is interesting. I think it's sort of like a requiem, like the, the saxophone has a mournful sound. I think it's sort of communicating this idea of R.I.P. to Virgil. It really does feel, and again, just do this. Listen to the Virgil set and then listen to this album and you'll totally see how well it fits. The first song is Falling Back, just more beeps and cool house sounds. It's cool how he like, this album is very well sequenced, it's very well conceived. So it starts off with him sounding unsure. It's almost like he's getting off of the, the certified lover boy, meat lover's pizza, stuffed crust, right? Like, you know how meat lover's pizza is too much, you don't want that much meat on pizza. And you know, stuffed crust is too much, you don't want stuffed crust on a pizza. So there's so much on it that you think it's gonna be good because you like stuff and you want more stuff. But the reality is, crust should not have cheese on it. There should not be more than one kind of meat on a pizza. So after getting off the stuffed crust thing, he's like starting off here, he's like, hey, uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, and he's like starting to get into it. And then he leads into this first song, this kind of heartbreak song, and the voice is all auto-tune, and it goes beautifully into the next song, Tex Go Green, which has like a slight dance hall open, like some, like, sounds like a DJ, like a toaster you know, from like, uh, from, from Jamaica. And this helps it to make it feel like a real DJ set, the connective tissues between the songs. And the lyrics are just about like being himself and why are you looking in the mirror? Uh, you're dealing with me rough. He's repeated over and over again. There's almost even a dance hall beat or even a slight like reggaeton beat at times in this song. But just the way he says, dealing with me rough, even when you hate Drake. You, you, you can't hate on his ability to just write stuff that people say and think. You're dealing with me rough. It's just a beautiful line, and he delivers it so catchy and so well. Uh, the, the title itself is very of the moment, you know, about like, I, I don't know. Watch, I have a whole video about how I hate youth speech, but, uh, about leaving text messages on read and all that kind of stuff. But... Uh, you know, it is about like phones. I guess if you get blocked, the texts go from blue to green. So that kind of makes sense. An interesting idea, sort of. You know, we've been writing we've been writing songs about the relationship between you know uh, like failed love and technology for a long time. <laughs> like, like, like you go back to like the '30s, and there's song. You know that song, "Hello My Baby," "Hello My Baby," "Hello My Darling," "Hello My Ragtime Gal," "Baby My Heart's on Fire," "Send Me Your Love by Wire." I mean, that's a cheesy ass line. That is, that is right along the lines with like, text me hearts, right? What I love about this and so much of the album is that it's willfully minimal. And I don't know, because I'm, I'm way out ahead here. I'm streets ahead with this review. <laughs> I'm releasing it within 24 hours. Maybe everyone else is gonna say the same thing I'm saying and go, Drake did a greatness. Drake did a good album by mistake. How did this happen? but I get the sense that people are going to be saying, it's actually not mixed very well, and his rapping's verses aren't very good, and nobody wants to hear house music. I don't know what this voice is, but that's the sense I get. But I love the willful minimalness of this album, because that's what a ha that, like when you're at a party and you're listening to house music, the kind of upbeat, uh, this kind of spacey synths and pianos and drum loops, like, you want to have a little bit of space. You want to be able to dance. You don't always want words. And that's what he provides here at the end of the song. Next song, song is called Currents. A wonderful Tame Impala cover. J joking again. What I like here is the beat here is like a bed-shaking beat. Like, like, like the springs on a bed. Which... <clears throat> Jesus Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Do not imitate bed springs. You tell me that in the comments. Um, anyway, it talks about moving to your rhythm, and it's fun because that sound of the bed springs, <laughs> which I won't make again, is very much like a sex sound, right? But it's sort of implied, it's not uh, explicitly said, and his voice is just great, and more songs about, more about like being together. Again, the whole, the, the album Certified Lover Boy, I believe I made this point uh, last time, is mostly about hate. It's like angry, it's an angry album. This album is actually about love. We should switch the album titles. <laughs> Cause like honestly, never mind, like Drake is like, I'm gonna kill the world with the world's greatest album. Hmm. Actually, never mind. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give you a meat lover pizza. And if we don't if we don't get the wing dings, who cares? Still got half a meat lover's pizza in the trunk. Tell me in the comments if you know where that quote comes from. Um but you know, here 
like he really is able to just have an entire album about love and heartbreak and different stages of love and different stages of heartbreak. Next song is called uh, A Keeper, kind of a sweet okay, a cool like like sometimes uh, house music will do this sort of like pounding bass like pounding bass it has that. I found a new muse that's bad news for you. That's a goofy line. <laughs> Next song is called Calling uh, Calling My Name. Kind of a guitar and swirling signs. I, I like the back half of the song quite a bit because it has these samples and there's a beat change and there's this line where it says your, your P word is calling my name. Um, but the way that the lines are given, I mean, part of what makes house music fun and interesting is that often it has sort of lines repeated over and over again. You know, like, I got a feeling and it's good. I got a, you know, like something like that. I, I couldn't think of an actual line, so I just came up with that. The next song is called Sticky. This is going to be the song of the summer. I just predict it. I think, I think he's trying, I think Drake sees that there's an opening for the album of the summer. Because Jack Harlow didn't hit it. And, and Kendrick, Kendrick was, <laughs> you want to talk about an artist, Kendrick did not give the people what they wanted. He gave them what they needed, and they're still mad at him for it. <laughs> Uh, so I think he sees it, and Sticky seems to be the closest to a traditional kind of Drake song. It's still very house, but there's a little more rap here. I'm very happy as a, as a lover of French Canada. Two sprinters to Quebec, chérie, où est mon bec? I am a professor of French, but French people wouldn't understand that. Où est mon bec is how you'd say, where's my kiss in French, like a beak. But they don't say that in France, they say that in Quebec. So. I would officially like to say, on behalf of French professors, on behalf of the Francophone world, thank you to Drake. Thank you for making a very specific French-Canadian reference to show the, the vivacity and the breadth of the French language. So it's cool, it's got this like bouncing house beat, but it's like kind of rap, lots of good crossover possibility, a really good hook on here, uh, some more standard kind of bitter, they're a little bit more bitter the lyrics here, like there's lots of people in the sea. And then he refers to himself as the rebirth of Virgil. So this is very complicated because, you know, Virgil would have had a successful life without Kanye. I don't think he would have been a superstar without Kanye. I mean, he had the intelligence and the drive to get really far, but Kanye obviously really pushed his career a lot forward. But it's... Is Drake trying to get into a beef with Kanye with, with this song? <laughs> because he quotes Virgil. We weren't supposed to come up with something this clean. And this is from a, a speech that Virgil gave. And this is from the part of the speech where he's describing how they came up with the cover for Jesus. So, so like, Drake is not just stealing your girl. He, you know what I mean? He's like stealing your collaborator. I don't know. I'm going to do up my button here. I don't know why I'm going all lounge suit Larry. A beautiful uh, musical, uh, like, instrumental outro on here. The, the, the way Sticky and Massive go together, that's the, just, the, just the meat of this album, just those two songs. It's really great. I already discussed Massive, then Flight's Booked. Got, like, a chopped up British R&B sample to start it off. A very kind of sweet song. Um, I do like how he pronounces California like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Chasing sunsets in California. Listen, that's exactly how Drake sounds. Overdrive starts with a guitar this time, a nice kind of blown out sounds. Now here's the thing. Is this bad production? Or is this good production? Is the fact that I hear it and I go, this sounds kind of blown out, a sign that someone mixed it wrong? Or is it a sign that someone intentionally mixed it that way? I don't know. Other music reviewers really like talking about that stuff. Like, like Fantano like, loves talking about like, when things are mixed well. And that's awesome. I don't, I don't have the ear for it. I don't have the ear for anything right now. I've got such bad allergies. Like, I feel like I'm in an airplane all the time. But, <laughs> um, you know, so I, I don't know. I've never heard an album and said, this is mixed bad. It just doesn't bother me. But I do notice sometimes a thing like this where it sounds kind of blown out and I think it's nice. I will say that this is almost plagiarism for the song Love Don't uh, Cost a Thing by J-Lo. <laughs> You could sing that song, love don't cost a thing, along with this song. Um, Downhill's the next song. This is the softest of all the soft songs on an entirely soft album. No bangers on this album. No attempts at a bangers. 
he's not going zero to 60 real quick. He's not going to zero to 60 at all. He's going like 20. This doesn't have any drums. It doesn't have any thumping bass. It has snaps and what sounds almost like a thumb piano. Some great atmosphere sounds in the back. Too late, too far gone. Another uh, singer, Bo Knox, comes in and sings We Tried. This chorus is like just We Tried, We Tried. The real sense of heartbreak that comes through on this album, the more I think about it, and maybe this is why I should have waited a couple days to listen to this album, but I don't want to, I wanna talk about it now. Let me go back to this theory I have here. This is as deep as I need to go. This album gets no deeper than an amazing, wonderful piece of art in a specific style in homage to a great artist who recently passed. That is very deep, and that's deeper than most things I review on this channel. But the actual things that are being said are basically all the same. Oh girl, why did you leave? Oh girl, I'm gonna leave you. Oh girl, you left. Oh girl, I left. The tie that binds, back to a little more of a house thing here, the stutter step bass sound, really nice. The kind of ride cymbals, the, listen to the ride cymbals on here, very kind of calls back to a very tangible house sound. Um, this is, again, like it's weird though, cause now we're like happy. Now he's happy with her. Maybe I'll take you to my family, change your name. Also, I'm gonna make a prediction that um, Drake or whichever one of his songwriters, quick note, Drake is a great artist who has a lot of ghostwriters. Those things can be true at the same time, okay? Andy Warhol had a factory. <laughs> Most of the things that carried his name, he didn't touch. Doesn't make him not a great artist. Drake, Kanye, they don't write all their lyrics. It's okay. So whoever it is that wrote this song, just listened to Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash. I mean, no, no, Walk the Line. I'm sorry, Walk the Line by Johnny Cash. Like, because you're mine, I walk the line. I keep a hard head for the tie that binds. I mean, like, it's, it's literally like for the tie that binds. Why am I singing so much? I know why I'm singing, because I'm inspired by Drake. Like, there's, he actually rhymes walk the line and the tie that binds in that song. And here we have Tie That Binds and Walk the Line. I don't know, great guitar work on here. Almost like willfully cheesy guitar work. You know, like, like sounds like something you might hear in a, you know, in a, in, a, in a clothing store. But again, they just let it breathe. The production on this whole thing just lets it breathe because you want to be in that space. Because you could be at a Louis Vuitton after show and you could put this album on and everybody could kind of dance and be in that proper, that proper headspace. Liability. Oh. Now it's great here. I talked about album sequencing. I am really loving this album, by the way. I know I know a lot of you like really love my stuff for my underground hip hop and you know Billy Woods and the Lucid and Mock Homie. And I love all that stuff. It's not that this is better than that. But life is so much better when you can love it all. <laughs> you know? Like when you can really find what's great in someone like Drake. When when you can like connect to that the way that like other people can connect to it and when you can see it, it just makes life so much better. It sucks being a hater. That's, that's one of the things I wanna say about on this channel. Just everyone stop hating. Okay. Liability, awesome. He like chops his voice up, makes it low. So the flow of the album, the sequencing, it feels like you know we had the intro and we had this whole house thing and then as the album ends, it's sort of changing the way that it sounds. It's moving more towards a sort of more traditional sounding Drake album. So we have this song, a little bit more straight R&B. They're the most Drakey Drake lyrics on this very undrakey Drake album. You put your words together like you're getting points for that ish, like you're playing Scrabble on me. Your mama's the sweetest lady, that apple fell far from the tree. You know, like that kind of punchline setup weirdly aggressive towards his girlfriend or ex-girlfriend style lyrics. Like that's kind of Drakey. It feels like Drake is letting us get ready to get out of this zone. In, in, in really a similar way that, that, the, that The weekend really works on going from album to album and getting you into a different zone, this feels like he's taking you out. Drake also makes a lot of very, very good basketball <laughs> metaphors, or his writers do. You stepped back on this ish, girl, you hit the Harden on me. Just beautiful, because James Harden is famous for his, 
his 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 drop back shots, you know, like where he dribbles up and then you're about to guard him and then he backs up and then he he makes a shot. I'm I'm a big Celtics fan, so uh, I don't know what it is to make a shot. I assume people do that at a certain point in a basketball game. Uh, when I watch my team, they mostly just take the ball and give it to someone else. But James Harden was a very talented basketball player, is a very talented basketball player, and is able to back up and take a shot and make that shot. But then also, obviously, it's a homonym for Harden. Like, his heart is hardening. Or her heart is hardening. So it's this whole, like, beautiful line. It's great. The album ends with Jimmy Cooks, and now all of a sudden, is, I thought I was eating a margarita pizza, you know? Very simple, you know, just the tomato sauce, the basil, the mozzarella, thin crust. But this last slice here, it's a little reminder of that, of that, of that meat lover's pizza we got in the trunk, you know? Featuring 21 Savage, the first featuring. Out of nowhere, we got trap beats. He's changing up the set. He's moving on. There's a sample from the Southern Rappers, which Drake likes to do. A good verse from Drake, F a pigeonhole, I'm a night owl, this is a different mode. You know, like he's doing typical Drake, th Drake things, kind of a good chorus, but again, he's sort of like being confrontational, and this is a party for my day ones, and they don't like what I say, and then say something, and then Drake does what he does better than anyone else, which is let someone else have the best verse on his album, <laughs> which of course is 21 Savage. He's great at assists, okay? He's like Jason Tatum. He's great at passing the ball, not great at making shots. You need him to. It's okay, I'll get over it eventually. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a great verse from 21 Savage. I like how he has this great flow. He switches up his flow halfway through and starts doing this sort of Izzle speech. You know, I fell in love with Dizzy, so I was spizzing. Got mad love for the boy. Yeah, that's my twizzin. If the mm's again dissin', slide a gizzin'. And why the reason my ops ain't got no frizzens. It's nice to hear that kind of style being thrown back into the mix. And, and, and just like that, Drake's done. He's done. There's not going to be um, actually never mind part two, right? Or never mind actually, whichever one it is. This is it. This is a contained piece of art with a very specific vision, the very specific goal that was produced and achieved, is enjoyable to listen to, is well made, and is done. Drake made art. These are my Patreons. They give me money so that I can buy music. Um, that, like you saw, I had the Don FM album. These are the people who gave me the money to do to do to do that to do to do that. It's speech lessons. So uh, thank you very much to these people. I would probably buy this album. I've never bought a Drake album in my entire life. Well, that's not true. <laughs> I bought Zero to Sixty uh, on iTunes because <laughs> I, I like that song so much. I know so little about Drake that I saw I saw Kanye in Toronto on the Yeezus tour when Kendrick opened for him, and that was the show where Drake showed up and like the spotlight showed at him, and I didn't know <laughs> yeah I didn't, I didn't know who he was. This is back before I was paying attention to music. So, anyways, all right, there we go. Let me know in the comments what you think about this album. Uh, if you think I'm totally crazy for loving a Drake album as much as I love this, or if you're happy to finally have me on board. Until next time, there's the camera.